Hey everyone, um, well I'm gonna try something which uh, a lot of people have asked for uh, in the chat on YouTube so I'll try to try to keep you guys happy in the comments and I do listen to you guys keep your suggestions coming and a lot of you have asked for longer time limit so I'm playing now very long time limit it gives me enough time to have a shower maybe even a bath and I'll probably go down the pub and have a couple pints of Guinness um, and we're playing 15 minutes plus 10 seconds a move so this will give me a good amount of time to talk through my moves and then afterwards maybe analyze the game so I'm going to try to tell you exactly what I'm thinking throughout this so you can get into the mind of a grandmaster um, now I would also like to say um, good day to you sirs good day good day good day and um, I'm going to pass over to my cousin now who wants to wish you a uh, happy St. Patrick's Day so come on cuz over you come happy St. Patrick's Day there he is there's my cousin being a naughty little imp there saying, Happy St. Patrick's Day. Well, good day to you there, cousin. And of course, St. Patrick's Day is the national day of Ireland. I love that country. Love Ireland. Love the Irish people. Love everything about it. So, OK, so look, back to the game. Uh, let's not get distracted now. So I'm playing Tigers Modern, and this is an opening which Ginger GM are going to release a DVD on. Uh, quite shortly we're just editing it at the moment so many other things going on and it's an opening where you start with g6 and bishop g7 now generally you follow this up with d6 and you, you remain quite flexible with your development so you leave your knight on g8 until later on maybe this knight will come out maybe it won't depending on white strategy white has a lot of different setups that white can play and um, this is a great opening to play with black if you want to play aggressive, interesting chess and you want to win the game. You know, it's a very double-edged opening. Now, Tiger's Modern is generally um, an opening that comes about where you play A6 and B5 early. But this would be a major mistake in this position. This is an, a rule. You only go a6 and b5 when white has moved the knight to c3. And I know this from Tiger explaining this in his video. Because without a knight on c3, one of the main ideas of Tiger's modern of pushing the b-pawn. I mean, this has got other names. You could call it the perk, etc. I call it Tiger's modern because his idea is generally quite, should we say, he's got the latest theory on this opening. But this is a waste of time now that pawn's got, white's got a pawn on c3. So here I can play knight to f6 and I change into a standard development. Now sometimes moving this knight out is not a good idea too early because you can run into e5. This is one thing to watch out for. And also white has ideas if he wants to try to attack you quickly of bishop e3, queen d2 and bishop h6. And then you want a knight on g8. But now that my opponent has played knight f3 and c3, this is quite a, a slow system. So I have time to play standard perk ideas and I have time to develop this knight. Now here there's a, a couple of ways of playing. And <clears throat> the way, well there's a couple of decent ways of playing. There's two very interesting ways of playing. One is with e5 and one is with c5. You need to do something to attack, attack this position. Now the most easiest thing to remember is this e5 break and I'm going to move my knight to c6 preparing to come with e5. Uh, I need to defend this square. Now this does give white the option of playing d5 and then my knight will probably have to retreat and in that system, it looks like I, I've lost some tempo. But things are not so clear because if I have to retreat my knight, maybe he doesn't want his pawn on this square because when he moves his pawn to d5, it's overextended, a bit like the Alakine opening. And in the Alakine, you can go e6 and c6 later on to attack that. Now here, I'm just going to continue with my plan of e5. Yes, white can exchange queens off now by capturing on e5 when I will have to exchange queens but generally if you're black in an opening 
what the Russians taught us and what is is a very sensible way to play. If we get equality, if we get an equal position with black, we should be happy. And after a capture on e5, white won't be able to claim any advantage because he's lost one of his central pawns for, well, this pawn on d6, which is not great. So it'll be an equal position then. And I would have gained uh, equality. So I can't be too upset with that. Of course, I prefer it. he didn't exchange queens because it would lead to a more dynamic and exciting game. But when you're black, sometimes you, you have to just play the best moves and you have to play in response to what your opponent white here does. So hence why I'm just going e5. So again, one of the things with this opening, which if you buy the DVD, Tiger's Modding when it comes out, and it's the first time, by the way, we've ever done this, this kind of DVD because we're doing it with me and Tiger presenting. So what that means is um, that I'm asking questions, he's answering. So it should be a very interesting concept. I don't know if it's been done before. Probably has. Okay, so my opponent's come with a knight, and he wants to bring his knight to c4 to pressurize my center. So we've always got to be aware of our opponent's moves and what he's planning. Now, one of his good pieces seems to be this knight on f3. This knight on f3 is boostering his center, pressurizing my center. I'm just thinking logically here. My bishop on c8 is the only piece not developed. So I'm going to play bishop g4. And with this very sensible developing move, I can pin that knight. I can get rid of one of his good pieces. In this position, I'd say his knight is better than my bishop. But more importantly, I'm pressurizing his center. This is very important. If now he takes on e5, I'll probably recapture with my knight. And then we can see his bishop is a bit misplaced on c2, if you can picture that happening. Because he would probably, after capturing on e5, knight takes e5, like to go bishop e2. So he now has decided to close the position down. So I've got to decide where to move my knight. Well, I mean, moving it to b 8 not so stupid, but I think I'm just going to move it to e7. It hasn't got a great potential. You always, when you have to move your knights... You should always think, where are they going to move in the future? Now, I have a decision. I don't now want to swap my bishop off. Before, I thought his knight was better. But now, I prefer my bishop. Why? Because he has closed down the center with d5. And by playing this move d5, it seems to me there's not much point in me capturing his knight. Because if I do capture his knight... I'm not going to have the same pressure, these captures in the centre, putting pressure on his centre. I prefer keeping my bishop because now the, the centre is closed. I've got a typical pawn break I'm going to try to play, like a King's Indian defence, f5. And I want to play this pawn break. And later on, my idea will be to prove that h3 is a weakness. And my bishop, hopefully later on, will partake in an attack against that square. So he's played a typical move c4 but i think he's done some things wrong here his knight on a3 is is a rubbish piece he wants to bring that knight to c3 so i've got a couple of moves i can play here now i think a normal idea would be to move my knight and go f5 this because the center is closed f5 would not be a strong plan if he still had a pawn on d4 because then he could open things up, but it's closed, so I need to look at pawn breaks. Another pawn break is c6, but I prefer to play on the king side. Now, where do I move my knight? e8 is safe and, and cautious and okay, but it seems to me that, well, moving it to this square is more double-edged, h5, because I'm going to stick with a very simple plan, very simple, because the problem with moving it to h5, it is more active. And I might have ideas of coming to f4. Maybe it was a better move even. But my main idea is to go f5. Now, when I play f5, I expect white will want to take on f5. And I will want to probably take with my pawn. I want to have the option of taking with my pawn. Maybe it's not always best to do that, but I want to have the option of taking my pawn. Now, my logical way of thinking is, if this knight here was on h5 in that position, which I've just explained... My opponent would have tactics involving his knight on f3. He'd be able to play a move like knight takes e5. 
and that would unleash his queen against my undefended knight on h5. So in actual fact, my knight on h5 can become a weakness. My knight on e8 is much safer. So what's my opponent trying to do now? Let's try to work out. He's moved his knight. Actually, Korchenoi played a similar idea against me. And I think he wants to play f4. This is his way of countering f5. Now, maybe this is a bit premature because I don't think I would have gone f5 straight away because you always have to watch out for knight g5 if his knight's on f3. Now his knight's gone away, I'm going to play f5 because I don't have to watch out for knight g5. So I'm just going to play this, this sensible move. And I expect he'll try to play f4. But then his knights, look at his knights. His knights are very sidelined. I don't like where he's put his knights. So he's trying to play a very solid system. But this strikes me as being quite risky for him. Now, what do I do? Now, maybe he wants to go g4 to close down that area of the board. Now, there's two good ways of following through here. I could play like a King's Indian, and I think I will do, because it gives me a very safe plan, and I like easy plans. And in the King's Indian main line, you often play here. That's what I'm going to play, because it gives you a very easy plan. And my easy plan now is to go h5, g5, g4, and attack over there. Now, again, we also have to consider what our opponent's going to try, and I don't know why b3 seems like a waste of time. He needs to play the break c5. This has to be played. Um, he has to go for counterplay, but this is too slow, b3. Now, before I go for g5, one of the, my problem pieces, because I have my pawns all on dark squares, look at those pawns, they're all horribly placed. Well, I say they're not horribly, they're horribly placed for the bishop on g7, because it's striking against them. So before I play g5 and put another pawn on a dark square, positionally speaking, I'm going to play bishop here. And I want to sneak my bishop to the other side of those pawns, maybe getting it into g3. I don't want to lock that piece in because when I do finally strike on the king side, my bishop may well be a great attacking piece on g3. So I'm just going to do this. And now, well, I think I'm happy to allow him to play this move, bishop to e1, because I swap off my bad bishop. This bishop is very bad. I'm able to swap it off now. There are other interesting ideas here. Now I could also play g5 and allow him to take when I take and open up the g file. And he won't be able to block a because I have this square and that will give me ongoing pressure. I've also got bishop g3. Very interesting. If he takes, pawn takes, knight g4, h5, knight e3. Very interesting. I've got a very dangerous pawn on that square. I think I prefer g5. I think I quite like this g5 idea, actually. I'm going to play g5. Now, this is my normal idea. and I've moved my bishop on the other side because you, when you play, if you, if you play the, this Tigers modern, it fits in very well if you play the King's Indian defense as well. I sometimes think you should suit openings. And the reason this suits the King's Indian, because you get similar ideas in both openings. And we're going to see here that my idea is very similar to the King's Indian. The King's Indian, this bishop I said I didn't want to exchange, could be a very important tacking piece. Now, my opponent is aiming to get his knight back in the game, but he should have played knight to g4 now, because now I'm able to get my most bad my worst piece in into a very nice outpost and because it's a closed position meaning the pawn structure is locked look at the pawns they're all locked in the center of the board here uh, go come back mouse they're all locked so there's no captures of pawns available because they're all locked you have time to maneuver my opponent's maneuvering i'm also going to maneuver and I saw a hole. You've got to look for outposts. Those are squares where your opponent can't defend with any pawns. He can't defend that square with pawns because both of his pawns are moved, leaving that square undefended, meaning that now I want to place my knight into that square, which I'm going to do immediately. I mean, uh, I mean, do I do this immediately or do I wait a little bit? I mean, I'm, I, think, I think, first of all, I'm getting very annoyed with my mouse here. You can see, I think it's because my phone's near my mouse. It's not so It's not so important now because 
I'm going to have to move my phone. It might interfere with the signal. Uh, and God, I'm glad this is not a three-minute game. And everyone says get a new mouse. You know what it is? It's my computer. I'm pretty sure I have a very good mouse. Thank you for everyone who's offered to buy me a mouse. It's very kind. But I think it's actually my computer. It's you know, it's a bit slow at times. I'm I'm still saving for a new computer. Again, the donations that people have given me are certainly going to help me uh, get you know get nearer to buying this computer. Now I think I'm better here. My opponent is just defending, defending, defending. Now what are my plans? Well, I have knight g3. I have this plan. Um, when my opponent will have to take my knight, so then either pawn takes is good. If I take with the f pawn. This knight on g6 can come into a beautiful square, but it's very blockaded then, not easy for me to, to make progress. Now, I think the way I want to win this is to do eventually a capture on... I need to sacrifice on this square. Okay, now my opponent is trying to avoid bishop takes h3 immediately, and I told you this piece is very important. Now, I think he should go knight g4 at some stage, but then, I, then I'm going to have to make a decision how I meet that. Do I try to play for h5 or do I do something else? Now, knight g3 check here. Takes, takes, knight g4, h5 seems to win a piece. I seem to win material now with this move, I think. Let's just count that because if you've got a good idea, don't rush it, double count. Now, I, I think this is just very good. My, my, I've got all the pressure. What you should do when you have the pressure, don't rush a situation. I don't even need to do this. I could move my rook to g7 first and enjoy a long-term attack but if you can win material it's normally enough to win the game and i'm going to move my knight into g3 and now the point of this is that his knight is going to be trapped and he he, he rushed that last move a bit too quickly by capturing on g3 because now only now it's probably going to become clear to him that his knight has nowhere to to escape to and this this was an automatic capture by him, but he shouldn't have done that. He should have given up the exchange by moving his king. But then, of course, he should be losing as well. So really, I, I think this has been kind of a clockwork game. And, and we'll have a look at this afterwards as well. I mean, he, he may play on for a bit of time. Do tell me if you like this. I will try to take... You can see my rating. We can do the, like, John Bartholomew, who did this excellent range of rating gains. We can try to play more standard chess. Maybe my idea should be to get to 2,500 standard. This could be the, the, the idea of this new, new, new sequence of games. And what I'm going to try to do in this uh, sequence is really help you guys explaining my thought process. Because... I think this is quite important, explaining your thought processes. I don't have time to do this in my quicker videos, so I'll try to make this a bit more educational. I'll play openings where you can buy the DVDs from us, because that should help you as well. And I'll generally just try to, you know, try to help you if you pick these openings, um, you know, deciding, uh, should we say, how to play the middle game. And this is a concept that a lot of people forget about how to play uh, the middle game in 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 chess um they don't they don't concentrate it on, on it long enough now okay well this is a fantastic position for me i'm gonna i'm gonna sacrifice an h3 at some point i'm not even in a rush to do it uh i could have done it last move i realized that was very strong but i like the idea of just keeping my opponent he has no breaks if he go well if he goes b4 i just take it and I go rook a5, and he can't break through my position. On the other hand, as I said before, and this is one of the long-term positional ideas, look how these things come in. You've got to realize the long potential of ideas. And I did say, when he plays h3, I want to keep my bishop because I may be able to take that pawn later on. I did say that was an important idea in this kind of structure. These are the kind of things books don't tell you. But you need to know in order to master the middle game in certain in certain positions. And I think these are key little bits of advice that can be uh, incredibly useful. And, well, I mean, this is not even a sacrifice because uh, I've got G2 coming um, if he takes. Now I'm going to reinforce the idea that if he takes, I go G2 by covering this square. And now if he takes the bishop, of course, I go G2 check, winning the game. Uh, there's a number of ways to win this position now. My simplest would probably be to move the bishop back and then use Harry to open him up on that area of the board. 
what other ways do I have of winning this one? Well, I mean, I could try to be violent and try to force things at queen h4. Um, other ideas, maybe just move the bishop and go queen h4. He's got to go king g1 here, and then I will probably just retreat the bishop. There's no need to do fireworks. Another bit of advice is when you've got a winning position, don't, don't do anything that's even remotely risky unless you have to. You know why? I'm a piece up here. Why should I even consider giving him a piece back unless I've worked out it's going to be winning for me? There's absolutely no point to it. In in a serious game, that is. Maybe if I'm messing about beating Danny Wrench's bottom, I would. But uh, we, we don't always have an opportunity to do that. So we're really just waiting here, I think, for my opponent to... Um, well, the, the only problem with this time limit is they, they could they could spend 10 minutes just, just getting ready to resign. And that means that leaves me wabbling on for 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 a whole ten minutes. But um, maybe we, we can you know discuss. I, I'd like to go over the game again, just discussing the key points because one thing you guys should get in the, the habit of doing when you're at home on your own is to you know look at the, you look at your games. Um, okay, my opponent is trying to run away. I don't think he's going to run away because I'm going to win G2 and this is completely hopeless for him now. It's going to be checkmate very soon. Um, I think there's a checkmate on F2 coming up. Checkmate, a little bit of calculation needed. I've got check, checkmate here. I've got knight takes F3, checkmate in one move. That's a nice way to finish. Boom! Put out your piper, smoke it. Okay, so um, there we go. That seemed to be a, a quite nice smooth game. Um, let me just go over those key things because what, what I was saying before that is you should always try to learn from your own games, especially if you lose them. Don't use a computer always. You're not going to learn much by putting it on a computer. You might learn some ideas, but try to think plan wise. For example, a computer is not going to tell you about this bishop, where the bishop should go. You're only going to get that from planning in the right way and experience. Now, let's go over the, the key points. So Tiger's Modern is where you go g6 and bishop g7. And I think it's a brilliant way to play, but it is a hard opening to learn because there are a number of different white systems and you have to be flexible against them all. So I wouldn't recommend this opening for beginners. I certainly wouldn't. I'd recommend it for people who are a bit more accustomed to, uh, you know, you know cer certain positions. You know, I'm going to be honest. Um, I am always try to be honest with, with my coaching. The black line is better suited for beginners because in the black line, if you look at the archive, you'll see videos I've done on that. You play the same setup against everything that white does. The difference with the perk, it's harder because you have to adjust to different white setups. So you have to understand how to adjust in the right scenario. Now, knight to f3 is not a very worrying way to play, you know, to face it. And black should be equal in all lines after this. And c3 is a very positional way of playing. But remember, when c3 is played, any ideas of a6 and b5 are total rubbish because you only play a6 and b5 to attack a knight on c3. Otherwise, it's rubbish. So now I change plans and I just castle. We've developed both quite finely here. And I go for my main break, e5, by playing knight to c6. Now, of course, white can play d5, as I mentioned. But then I'm going to put my knight back. And I'm going to try to claim his pawn is a target to attack. So I will then attack that pawn on d5 with c6 and e6. My opponent moved his bishop. I think this is a slight error. All these slight errors um, increase, you know. Because that bishop, I think, is better in some positions, it might be needed over there. Why? What? What's the reason of this move? This is a typical lower level mistake. Why don't ever play moves that have no, no, no reason. Have no, you know, this move doesn't do anything. You know, you've got to get out of the habit of playing moves that you think might look okay, but you've always got to have a reason. No reason. E5, taking a stake in the center. Knight A3, at least this has a reason. But then... Well, now his now his center is in trouble. And the, the reason is I'm trying to make him close the structure. Now, if he doesn't close the structure, I'm threatening to take the knight and take on d4 when his center will implode. If he takes on e5, I will now take with my knight because his bishop can't block the pin with bishop e2. And after he plays h3 here, this is a key idea which computers won't tell you. This pawn here 
why shouldn't I exchange my bishop for his knight? Because in the king's Indian defense, I'm taking this from that opening now, the bishop is needed in order to sacrifice itself to attack white's king's side. It's a really, in, in, a really important part of the whole plan that goes with f5. It's really so important to keep this bishop. And now that the pawn structure has been closed in the center, it's locked, I can now go for more pawn breaks because f5 was a bit risky before because he could open things up. But now this pawn break is coming and there's nothing he can do about it. So I might as well, when the, when the pawn structure's locked, look for pawn breaks. My opponent plays now some pretty meanless moves. I get my pawn break in, f3 I don't really like, I think f4 was better. And I just play here because it gives me a simple plan. Simple plans are often good. My opponent's next move is another major mistake. What does it do? It's a nothing move. He should at least go b4 and aim to start counterplay with c5. Another thing that you have to remember is... Um, if you are defending a position, don't defend passively. Have a plan. Come at your opponents. So b3 is nothing. And now positionally speaking, my bishop pops out on the other side of the pawns because imagine if it was still on g7. That bishop, if it was still on g7, would be locked in the prison behind me. I knew there'd be a prison theme coming up and it would be locked in the, in the, in the prison bars. And that is maybe one of the themes of this, another theme of this positional game. It is a positional game. The prison bars are these pawns here. But now my bishop is outside. I allow my opponent to take that piece because later on I will have an open line to attack on. And here it's just a matter of bringing my pieces in. I see that my knight can get to this square now. You've got to look at it proving all your pieces in closed positions. So I maneuver that knight into come into that square. But I just move my pieces in and now as soon as I see an opportunity to win material, knight to g3 check. And as we saw in the game, it's, it's pretty much all over for him here. He's going to lose the exchange. I mean, if he goes king here, well, I mean, this is absolutely hopeless. I mean, I can take the rook, but I could also go knight takes knight. You know, another good move, which I might well do, is just take here. And again, look at the power of that bishop. It's such an important tacking piece. Later on, I'll go king here, I'll triple my rooks on the g-file, I'll crash on g2, and it'll be the end of the game. Okay, well, thank you for viewing. Something a bit different. I know some of you, you know, some of the things I do, some of you will like, some of you won't like. I'm trying to do different things, you know, to try to give you a, a wide, you know, a wide area of, of different things. So if you like something, you've got it. But, you know, I'm going to try different, different things out. And do let me know what you like. If you like this, let me know. If you didn't like it, well, uh, sorry about that. But I'll, I'll be doing the other things soon. Cheers. And uh, let's see if we get to 2,500. Uh, goodbye for now. Have a great weekend. Happy, happy St. Patrick's Day. And um, I'm going to be off soon to join my brother in some Williams celebrations. So see you all. Uh, see you all soon. Have a great weekend.